Hi, everybody. I'm Lou Aronson, the founder and CEO of Discourse Analytics. And what we do is we humanize your data to figure out why all the individuals in your audience connect to your brand. So for years, and we're sitting here today at the National Association of Broadcasters Convention, and broadcasting has always been a one-way transmit out. And the interesting thing has been that all the viewers in your audience, all the consumers of your content, they're giving you signals back in terms of what they like. We find those key drivers for you in those preferences. I don't go to a particular website. I don't watch a particular show. I don't consume content on a mobile device because I'm a white male. I do this because there are certain why drivers that connect me to that product that's being pushed out there. So how do we do it? In this audience, and if you can think of the 100,000 people that came here to the NAB show, they're all here for a different reason. They all have a different driver that connect them to the product. So we listen to those signals. Um, we listen through a series of APIs and a survey tool that can plug in on, uh, on mobile and web. The APIs connect into your CRM and your CMS systems. And we model for social also to figure out the mindset of each person. We're not looking for Chardonnay soccer moms. We're not looking for environmental Ford truck drivers. We're actually building a profile on every single person in your database. We're then building clusters not tied to their demography. Again, we've always modeled off of demography because we didn't have anything better. Click path, demography is correlation. We find the causal connections that group all those people together. We pass that data back to you for you to utilize in your CRM systems to then create a more contextual, customized experience for your audience who's going to value you more because you're now listening to them. Does it work? It's always the good question, right? And it does. What's interesting is people have opinions and people want to share it. And when people are clicking on content, they're giving you evidences of their attributes. If they're sharing that data to Facebook, if they're emailing that data to a, an article to a friend, if they're posting that video somewhere, they're building a profile on themselves for you that all you have to do is listen for. Uh, not a lot of people are familiar with this site. It's a small site that MSNBC runs. We were brought in to model a property called the GRIO, which is an African-American portal. They wanted to learn about the political views of this audience. We modeled that crowd, and we were able to figure out one weekend that 8% of their audience liked country music, which in and of itself was somewhat shocking. But then about 7% of the whole, 90% of that slice, 7% of the people daily, were African-American males over the age of 45 who fit the NASCAR profile perfectly. This is a group that could have curated content sent to them, new products delivered to them, and hyper-targeted advertisements. It drove increased engagement with over 1,900 hours on the site over the course of a year. And by just appending the data from a survey question and adding new questions into it, we were able to build these data files. What was really interesting was the people who answer with the majority or the plurality on a day when there isn't a uh, majority, they think they're right. And those people are 27% more likely to engage with content the next day. I learned that because my mom called me up one day and she said, I love being right. I'm like, mom, you're always right. I get that. But what does right mean? And right means when you're marching with the crowd. Also, you could see dramatic shifts in the audience. So you would think that most of the people on this uh, at the GRIO are thinking the same way. But on two areas in particular, gay marriage and types of cars they would like to drive, you could see dramatic shifts. I mean, they were basically polar opposite. The workday folks in the second screeners were completely different in terms of how they viewed the world. Um, and then the great thing about the tool that we have is it builds profile clusters, and you can start seeing how those clusters are shifting over time. And so you can then get out ahead of the curve in terms of the relevance of your content and what else to develop along those lines. And this is what a profile looks like. It's going to build a weightage and leaning in terms of the topical things that people look for. And I would, you know, just for context, think about the Malaysian tragedy in the airline. Everybody who was clicking on that article, they really weren't as concerned with Malaysia as they were the tragedy and the human interest in the, in the story that was going on. So you could start seeing how you're getting bad data sometimes by looking at some of the stuff that you think is always predictive. And a couple of our clients are there. We're doing some work with Microsoft in the White House. We're helping Capital One do some work with their customer base. And we're right over there behind the guys in the pink shirts. 
We're here till Thursday, and we'd love to help you better understand, better engage, and better model your audience. Discourse Analytics, thanks. So, so